welcome to my channel. So today I've got a West Clock uh, pocket watch. It's a, considered the dollar uh, watch, I think, back in the day. And these things um, were worth about a buck. And a buck back then was probably ten bucks now. But they were very cheaply made. They were mass produced. Um, and they were sold to local lay people. Um, so their case is not I don't believe it's stainless steel of any type, but anyway, so a metal case, um, silveroid maybe, and as you can see, the movement on this this uh, clock is super simple. Um, so let's have a close-up look at this movement. So here we have the movement for this particular clock. One thing I noticed right away in this movement is that the mainspring is open. It's open air mainspring, so there's no cap on this mainspring at all. Um, there are no jewels on this watch as you can see that the pivots are just sticking through the plates like this So this would have been a brass plate with uh, steel pivots um, And these gears underneath would be um, the gears uh, The pivots for the gears underneath so this would be the first wheel as they call it so one two three and this is the escapement Right or so are four here actually and then here this little tiny pivot is the escapement the world's smallest pivot and I did notice um, on this watch that the spring on this thing is staked into the plate on the top so and there's a uh, there's a, a small pin that as you can see that goes all the way through uh, from this side to the other side so you'd have to remove this pin to remove the hairspring first before you remove the plate another interesting uh, thing on this watch is that the clips here um, the clips go down and they're kind of U-shaped, so or L-shaped. So they go down, as you can see. Let me see if I can angle that correctly. There you go. So you can see how that clip goes down inward and it goes into the watch and turns just a bit and it just sits there. So the click is kind of the the uh, these retaining uh, springs or whatever you want to call them, retaining clips, are kind of pushed into place. You could likely just grab the watch and pull it straight out because of that but i'm not going to do that and there's two one on each side holding the movement in place to regulate the movement they've got this little cheapo regulator on the top that's directly attached to the shaft so the beat error is you know is probably the beat error can't be set on this thing there there is no jewel in here at all so there's no jewel on the balance at all it's just metal and you grab that and just pull it back and forth and that just changes the, uh, the 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 it changes the actual um, overall length of the hairspring so it rides along the hairspring to change the length of the hairspring which if you make the hairspring shorter it speeds it up if you make the hairspring longer it slows it down so it's pretty simple you can see right here is the center wheel as well so from the wheel count as i said before you get one is the mainspring two is the center wheel Three is an intermediate wheel. Four is usually the seconds hand. And if I flip that over, and you'll see that's exactly what it is, the seconds hand on the watch. And then, then there's the, es the escapement here itself. Um, and the pallet fork is put in there somewhere too. I'm not sure where that is. So actually the escapement is this wheel and that's the pallet fork, I think. And yeah. So yeah, straight up down, that is the wheel with the seconds hand. Right, so it's some kind of a funky thing here happening because it's one, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's right. Fourth one is your seconds hand, and then the escapement is here, and then the pallet fork is right there. And the pallet fork is punching through here as well. So this thing actually does run. So if I wind it up slightly, you'll see it ticks away, which is kind of neat. It's really old. I'm not sure if I can get it ticking faster by putting a bit of oil on the top here. I might be able to actually, so let's try that out for a second because you're only allowed, you're only going to be able to put oil on the top and not on the other side without taking the movement out. So I will take a little tiny bit of Bergeron watch oil and I will put it on the pivots here to see if it makes a difference. I'll clean those up with Rodico in a second. Um, but a gentleman asked if I could have a look at this watch. Uh, and having a look at it, I would say. Uh, I think it's his wife's grandfather's pocket watch, right? I would say there's probably more chance of damaging this watch, taking it apart, than it's worth. So it's going to, 
you know, the cost of doing work on this watch would probably be around 200 to $300 to actually get this thing going. See, I touched the pallet fork pivot here and it said, oh, I don't like that. I'm going to stop moving. Let me put a little bit of oil on the mainspring here too. And then I'll just use Rodico to clean up the leftovers here. So I just do that like that. Probably too much oil right there, but whatever. So um, let me just get this thing running again. There we go. Come on. See, now that you got oil on there, it's like, I don't want to work. <laughs> Just get a little more power through the mainspring here. That's good enough. So there we go. So it's ticking away. Um, if I owned this watch, I'd probably figure out how to take it apart and fix it. But I actually don't believe that it's worth repairing for... Um, the amount of work it's going to take to make this thing run perfectly and its value, you're better off leaving it sort of vintage looking and and not doing anything with it. Uh, most of these watches you couldn't repair. Um, they were The plates were actually staked in um, or riveted in as opposed to screwed in. This one here, they do have screws so you can replace the mainspring by taking these screws off and replacing the mainspring. You probably you're going to remove the this plate here by undoing these springs, these screws as well, because they're all kind of attached, right? So that's going to happen. Um, if I flip this around for a second, and we'll have a look at the... Um, there's the uh, watch itself ticking away. Um, this would tick at 1,800 beats, or 18,000 beats per hour, um, and it is working right now. Uh, West clock, what does it say, EAX. I believe the time, you can set the time on this watch too. Let me have a look here and see if that's settable. Because I recall pulling this out. There we go. So rough feeling. I'm telling you. Well, it's 12.45 right now, so it's perfect. There we go. And then you just kind of push that back in. It doesn't seem to have a setting thing. as it just doesn't feel like it's clicking in nicely. D-A-X. So it's a shock-resistant... DAX watch. It is it is working. Um, I'm just going to recommend to the individual that it's not worth disassembling that and trying to fix it because there's a high chance of breaking something on this thing and it's only a, worth a buck. So you can find these anywhere by the way and buy these anywhere. They're not worth a lot. Just So this is the West Clock DAX and it's style 1A pocket watch. Um, and it is um, a nickel case, a paper dial. So that dial is actually a paper dial, which is always funny. I, I get a kick out of that. So um, it's probably not work a, worth a whole lot of money. They were built uh, between 1929 and 1931. So they go way back. Um, nickel case color, it says nickel. The nickel plated brass is the actual case. So it's nickel plated brass and a paper dial. Love it. Um, it's got a mainspring in it. It's uh, It's got a catalog number 600, which is the West Clock sales catalog number for this, for this uh, particular watch. So, you know, the actual price of these things were 76 cents US dollars. So a buck Canadian. Uh, these things would run for 30 hours. They're sturdy and trustworthy. Um, run for about 30 hours. Uh, the history of these things. I don't know. West Clock uh, out of Peterborough was making these things back in the uh, 30s. And, and uh, I don't know. They weren't worth a lot of money back then. So given that, I don't think they're worth a lot to repair. So if I we're actually to, to go on eBay and have a look at what these things have cost. Let me have a look and see. So just looking on eBay for a second, I see there's one here for $3. So $3 for eBay, $275 US, $379 Canadian. There it is. There's a West Clock um, Ben Pocket Watch. Vintage. It runs. It's worth 3 bucks. Three or four dollars, or you can go here for fifty-seven dollars and buy a whole sh crap load of them. <laughs> I was going to say shitload, but I decided not to. So, 
you got to watch these things too because they can be radioactive. That one there, the Time King, likely has radium on it. So these, or actually, the one that's got radium on it is the one in the, the black one on the uh, lower right hand side for sure has radium on the on the numbers, and that's radioactive. So you really have to watch that. So that's that's that. So not recommended. So they're not they don't cost a lot. I look at this one here. Um, again, you've got. You know, if I enlarge this or have a quick look at that, there's a radioactive one with radium on it. This one has got a pocket bin. Um, and this one here has got a little railroad on it, but uh, this one is made in the U.S. And some of these, as I was saying, were made in Peterborough, Ontario, Canada. Um, there's the one I believe that is radioactive. So not a uh, advisable to actually remove the crystal on this and have a look inside because any of those flakes get in your lung and you you could actually get lung cancer from that so i do have a geiger counter that i use when i need to uh to have a look at that um any any of them that are radioactive and if i were to hit radium dial i'd sure i'd get a lot so here's one that someone's trying to sell for 170 bucks this is more like it you're you're going to sell these things or you know or buy these things for seven bucks pocket bin they're not lot worth a lot. This one actually has the exact same movement as the movement I just showed you. There's the three screws and the mainspring. Uh, this one was made in the USA. Uh, the one I showed you is made in Canada. So there you go. So that's the uh, pocket watch again there. Uh, let me have a look again. So line that up. So my recommendation to the owner of this watch is not to get it maintained. I just put a little bit of oil on it and it's actually running pretty good. So I would just keep this thing running the way it is. And I wouldn't bother trying to uh, to make this thing run any better. It's uh, not something you're going to use as a timer. Uh, it's an old vintage pocket watch. So it's it's nice from that perspective, uh, but not worth any money. So, so I would just leave it the way it is. And, um, and there you go. So so I'll put this thing back together and give it to the gentleman. Um, I think it may be worth $7. Now it's worth something to the owner because I think the owner's wife's uh, grandfather owned this, right? So, but again, not worth any, not worth the money to actually repair this and stuff. It's just keep it vintage. Uh, even the dent on the case, you can say my grandfather was, uh, he was in a gunfight and he had this pocket watch in his upper pocket center kind of more center and they he got hit with a bullet and this watch actually saved his life that's that dent is where the bullet hit so this watch saved his life so now if you remember the old clint eastwood movie blood for a silver dollar that's what happened except it was a coin and not a pocket watch so, so there you go that was just a quick assessment of the watch i did give it a little bit of an oiling so it, it'll keep uh, it'll run a little bit better now but i don't think it's worth spending any money taking this thing apart or trying to take it apart actually it's not made to be repaired they made to throw these things out once they're used so there's my assessment of the uh the amazing west clock uh dax uh, pocket watch shock resistant made in canada and made in peterborough canada which had a very large watchmaking company and here is an artist rendition of the peterborough the West Clock Company in Peterborough, Ontario. And there is a uh, more modern picture of the um, West Clock watchmaking company. Um, I believe it closed in the uh, late 60s. And there it is there. It's just a beautiful old building. And that's where these uh, clocks or pocket watches were made back in the day. Thanks for watching my channel. I'm JD. So there you go. That's all I got today. Uh, that that is the West Clock Dax D A X pocket watch, and I got it running again. Let's just put it back on the pad here without the uh, without the back on, and you, as you can see, the thing is running. It's actually running pretty good right now. So, but that's about as good as I'm going to get it running. So thanks a lot, and uh, my wife is going to share this video with the owner, but I wouldn't recommend doing anything with this because. It does run, and any more work you do on it would probably screw that up. <laughs> so, thanks for watching my channel. Please like, subscribe. Any comments you have on these old dollar pocket watches, let me know. Um, like I said, radium dials. So, if you don't know if it's a radium dial and you don't have a Geiger counter, 
don't open them up because you could get a, a fleck of radium in your lungs and who knows what that'll do in the long term. So if you want me to do watch service for you, uh, contact me at uh, jdwatchservice at gmail.com, jdwatchservice at gmail.com. I don't mind doing a little assessment here. I don't charge for this. Uh, the gentleman's going to just probably pick it up sometime next week and he knows a little bit more about his uh, pocket watch. So thanks a lot for watching my channel again and uh, stay healthy and stay safe.